Happy New Year. A belated Happy New Year because we're halfway through January already. Where does the time go? Anyway, over Christmas I got a couple of cool things. You see them here on the left. There's a Gateway 2000 Socket 5 Pentium 100. So that was a nice buy. I was going to make this my first video of the year, but the case is in a little bit of a bad way. So while I wait for various glues and things to arrive from Amazon, I think we'll put that to one side and do that in the next video. The other machine on the right is the Packard Bell Cyrix M2300. So that's interesting to me because never had one of those before. There's also a bit of CPU comparing in this video because I want to see whether that Cyrix M2 competing with Pentium 2 300 was real or not, but we'll get to that in a bit. So this machine was bought locally for, I think it's £50 including the monitor, which you know wasn't cheap, but given that you got this really nice monitor as well, I thought it was good buy, especially considering when you look at what a, an M2 300 costs on eBay, never mind the hard drive and the CD-ROM and all the rest of it. So yeah, I think it's a nice little system. No mouse and keyboard, unfortunately, but they're easily found for reasonable money. You can see the machine still has its original sticker on the front with all of its spec and information, which is quite cool. It looks like there's a bit of paint, like it looks like somebody spilt a lot of paint over this machine while they're decorating the house or something so hopefully we'll be able to clean that up specs all written down for us don't even have to open the lid to take a look to know that we've got a club 40b is the model cyrix 2 300 processor packard bell media trainer keyboard we don't have that 32 megs of ram 4 megs of shared video we'll be putting a graphics card in there 3.2 gigabyte udma hard drive 512 kilobyte of onboard cache and sis 2d graphics not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination yeah so look at that somebody actually decided to paint their house and then i don't know it looks like they wiped their brush on this computer i think that'll come off okay so yeah there's uh a bit of scrubbing to do but it is emulsion that's porter based should be fine so yeah software included kind of usual bloaty wear pack that used to get with everything back then uh, microsoft windows 98 not windows se windows 98 se just the earlier version packer bell navigator which is that funky thing i've seen on other people's videos i hope it's still on this machine then the usual kind of bloaty stuff you will get microsoft works money and that kind of thing and carter etc It tells us there's a modem in there, it's not very exciting, and a little communications package included, including a free email account. And then in the end there we've just got another rundown of the basic hardware specs, so yeah I like it when you have stickers like this still on the front of the, the PCs, if we can get it clean, get the paint off that is. There's a couple of paint splats on the monitor but nothing major, if you remove that you can kind of see that it's a bit worse on the the base unit it sort of splurges out underneath there so i think what we need to do now is get out some ipa some cotton buds some kitchen towel and hopefully with a bit of wiping we'll be able to get this looking a little bit better and a little bit of elbow grease later look at that not a little bit of paint left it even came off the label nicely so you can read all of that and there's nothing sort of blocking the text came off the monitor so it's yellow, as you'd expect for things like this. I don't mind yellowing. I think I've said this before. I like I like the aging of it. I think it it gives things character. I don't want everything to be gleaming like I bought them yesterday because, well, I didn't. <laughs> They're like 20, 30 years old, so I like them to show their age. So spinning it around, you can see that this really is a basic business machine. There is nothing. <laughs> There's a modem card in it, and then you've just got your usual things. You've got onboard VGA port, parallel port, serial port, a couple of uh, USB 2s, you've got a joystick port, you've got your audio inputs and outputs, and you've got your PS2 mouse and keyboard. So not really much more for it, apart from to get the lid off, crack it open and see what lurks within. So let's get the modem out, as it's all that's in there, apart from the motherboard. We'll get to that in a second. So it says on the sticker on the front of the box that this is a K56 Flex modem, also V90. So I think K56 Flex was a standard from Motorola that competed with a standard called X2 from US Robotics when everybody was 
trying to get up to 56 kilobytes a second and the problem was you needed to have the same standard on either end so if you were trying to get that speed from a k56 flex to a x2 it wouldn't work and you get some slower speed but eventually everybody agreed on this v90 standard so i guess this is compatible with both and once everybody had v90 everybody got their 56k so yeah this one's from aztec i like aztec stuff i like their sound cards in particular so it's nice it's a make i like at least it will put it back in the box because i want to keep the machine as close to original as possible but yeah there you go a useless modem another one to add to the collection Next, we'll get the drive cage out. It was a bit tricky. I think I should have removed that crossbar thing before I did it, but squeeze it out in the end. So it's quite nice the way all this is uh, held together. It's relatively few screws. And yeah, this is the crossbar that I should have removed to get the drive cage out, but I definitely need to remove it to get the motherboard out. So that needs to come out as well. Okay, so get all the ribbons and rubbish out of the way and then we get the motherboard I can see straight away it's got an SIS chipset and I always always have to search for the last two screws no matter how hard I stare at the motherboard and I think they're finished and I try and lift it out and it won't come because there's always another couple of screws but out it comes oh no it doesn't shit And the power supply for today is brought to you by Aztec, running in at a powerful 145 watts. So here's the motherboard, and I think it has its own ID from a Paco Bell point of view, but really it's just a Biostar M5 SIB board. So it's nothing special, no Super, super Socket 7, I can't see an AGP port. And looking at the specs, it only goes up to 75 megahertz front side bus anyway, so you're kind of limited. But I would say in 1998 when this machine came out, you'd probably get this kind of motherboard and business machines, but everybody else was probably kind of looking for AGP and Pentium 2s and things by that time. But it supports both fast page mode and Edo RAM, which is handy and it has PCI 2.1 UDMA 33 and it has a built-in SIS 6326 for graphics which we will not be using but I think it's still quite a nice board though I personally put this more as a sort of DOS Windows 95 board than a Windows 98 board but I'll leave it as it is and all that power comes to you courtesy of the SIS 5598 Jedi Pentium chipset the board came in two flavors with either 256 or 512k of level 2 cash. Well, I'm pleased to say that this one has the 512 so that's good and it's pretty good for expansion as well for things like DOS and Windows 95 so we've got a couple of ISA slots on there as well and yeah not a bad little but I don't think I'm actually going to be doing much with this machine it's just a nice thing to have and I'm glad I've got the monitor for some of my other Packard Bells some of the more interesting ones like the corner PC. I should have said when I opened the case, as I undid the screws on the back, they had that crack that you get with, you could tell that this thing has never been opened before. So going into it, you can see it's really clean actually. I'm just gonna give it a quick brush, but you can see there's a little bit of like corrosion on the coin cell, uh, it must be the original one. So we'll replace that immediately as well. The processor is the Cyrix M2300GP. So that's a 75 megahertz front side bus multiply by three it runs at 2.9 volts on the core there was a low power version of this that is quite rare i believe running at 2.2 volts and there's also various different bus speeds for this there's a 66 megahertz one that runs slightly faster i think but these things had massive cache a 256 byte uh, code cache and a 64 kilobyte data cache very big to try and make up for that rubbish floating point unit so it'll be kind of interesting to see how it runs with games and things before we put the machine back together we we'll take a quick look at this drive bay and we've got a gold star 32 speed cd-rom drive it's obviously made of good quality plastic because it hasn't yellowed whereas everything else on the machine has and next to it there's an alps 3.5 floppy drive and tucked away around the back you can just see it there's a Fujitsu 3.2 gig 
hard drive. Now, it's funny, all the Pentiums I have from this era seem to have the same Fujitsu drives, ranging from kind of 1.2 gig up to 3 something. So I do like the look of these CPUs. The the same as 6x86s, because um, the M2 is literally is still a 6x86. They just relabeled it because it had gone on so long that it was competing against Pentium 2s. Now they thought they'd better change the name to something that sounded like it might compete with a Pentium 2, like M2. But yeah, they look really classy, I think, with their gold tops, kind of like, um, like the golden Wonka bar of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or something. But yeah, we'll get the PC back together and then we'll see how it runs. Now I think it's a classy looking little machine and it's posting, which is good. So I think we should go to the BIOS first of all and uh, set the time up and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, the BIOS on this thing is basic to say the least, which you'd expect from an OEM system. But as far as I can see, you can't even disable the level two cache couldn't find anything in here and I couldn't find any jumpers or anything on the board so any ideas of slowing this down for a DOS machine are probably a no-go though I imagine I could probably flash it with the the BioStar BIOS potentially rather than the Packard Bell one presuming that they're different the award BIOS on this I don't know whether it's a specific one that's limited on the Packard Bell machine or whether it's got more functionality on the original manufacturer's one but yeah not much to do in here just set the time and continue into see what's on the hard drive and of course it wouldn't be a retro project everything had gone super smooth up to this point but start to run into a few issues so i took turned it off again it did it did boot but i just didn't show it because of a couple of problems i ran into first of all i decided to open the machine up again and turn off that sis graphics chip so we're going to put some stuff in here to begin with we've got a uh, matrox mystique and i want to try some games so i'm going to put this voodoo 2 in there as well and the re the main reason that i stopped and opened this up was i started to have trouble with the cd drive it was intermittent to say the least so i thought if i've got to open it up to replace the cd drive i may as well sort out the graphics as well for the tests that i'm about to run so i went and grabbed an optical drive and replaced it i found a 32 speed one which i thought was you know roughly matching but then i noticed look at the front bezels on these things that are identical except the original one which is the one on the top was a gold star and the one that i've just put in it is an lg so i thought that was a bit fishy but yeah if you look at the labels the gold star one is actually made by lg so coincidentally and i'm pleased because i like to keep these machines kind of original i just happen to have the exact same drive except the original LG one and uh, it's exactly the same apart from the fact that it's got 32x written on the front which I can kind of live with and then we boot up again and I've got screen capture because of I thought it would be a bit much to have the flickering I can't quite get my camera to sync against the refresh rate on the CRT so we'll just do a bit of capture instead and into Windows and the first thing that you're greeted with is this sort of rather funky Packard Bell type thing. I guess that is. What does that say? The computer home to the, well, the computer to the home. <laughs> anyway, we'll get some drivers loaded up for the Matrox and for the Voodoo 2 and take it from there. So at first glance, it does look like this thing has basically a fresh install of all of the Packard Bell kind of restore, system restore that you would get. It's got all of the programs that would have come out with that. So it'd be quite interesting to take a look. I've seen this kind of stuff on other Packard Bell enthusiast YouTube sites. People like Nostalgia Mel and stuff like their Packard Bells and I've seen all this stuff on their channels. But it'd be nice to take a look and it myself I never got around to loading any of the stuff on my other pack of bells so it seems to have the exact things that actual soccer for games and a whole bunch of things would have come with it but I don't have the discs so I can't run them I shall see if I try and get hold of images or or whatever to go with the machine but we've got a few mad things so this is obviously an office based thing so you've got this phone tools thing which I guess is for officey type stuff it's got 
links up to your modem and then allows you to just hook into your address book and kind of fax and email and take and receive calls through your little headset all from one place yeah i was kind of mad when these kind of modems more advanced stuff first start to appear where you just be able to fax from your computer which i actually used to do a couple of times i used to receive official things i remember faxing in i think it was a a job application or references or something once from my PC so it was all like the cutting edge the bleeding edge of communications back then but yeah kind of tedious now so I won't be looking at that again probably and then there's a thing here called MGI photo suite which has all these kind of activity things that used to get that I don't know if I ever used them or anybody else ever used them all these things that used to encourage you to print your own calendars make your own t-shirts, send your own Christmas cards, all that kind of crazy stuff. Never ever did any of it, never saw anybody do any of it, but I guess it might be kind of fun to do some of it in hindsight, maybe a little video at some point, just being mad with creative software that used to get with these crazy machines. Yeah, I've got some OCR software, remember that. Getting, I think this machine must have come with a, with a scanner of some kind, because there is like drivers and stuff, but yeah scanning text and then being able to print it out fascinating stuff i remember messing about with that briefly just marveling at how you could do it when i got my first scanner and then probably never really using that scanner ever again and then we've got the obligatory stack of microsoft stuff that you all seem to get with every computer back then your works your microsoft money your encarta so indeed it does look like this thing has got a completely fresh install everything that it says it should have on the sticker on the front it seems to have and none of it seems to have been used in fact it looks like this machine's had a completely fresh install of the system software and there are a few documents in my document folder look like essays or something so i think somebody's been using this in a very light way purely for some university work or something like that so apart from those documents it's totally fresh we've also got this crazy pc doctor thing which is some kind of diagnosis tool i had a quick check to check the integrity of my hard drive and it all looks to be fine so that handy thing to have i guess on a machine like this i like to keep this software original if i can i need to get some uh, some backup discs for it and then also put the the same system onto on my corner pc and i've got another packard bell Pentium 120 I think so I guess they probably all have the same stuff they're all all club series machines I think so the last thing and this is the thing that I was hoping that would be on this machine I've seen this on other channels is this crazy Packard Bell kind of interface guide type thing making the PC simple for those who can't deal with the Microsoft Windows 98 desktop so you get this house and you've got this crazy little remote control in the top right hand corner that kind of navigates around things that doesn't seem to work terribly well but basically you've got this fluttering butterfly <laughs> cursor and if you click on a room it takes you there so the first one you've got is this kind of nursery and then you get little icons it basically pulls in icons from the Windows desktop so you can hook into your early learning stuff from here for your kids so everybody basically goes to their own room in the house so that kids could go here and then the next thing is your your disgruntled teenagers bedroom where they're forced to do their high school homework and yeah you know, they probably put links to uh yeah let's less savory stuff on their their whiteboard there but yeah that's for their homework and all that kind of thing then there's a games room with a pool table which has had a little kind of cool billiard break animation they all have little animations when you click on certain things which is quite nice so yeah this is your games room where you'll get your icons for quake 2 so you can go do some fragging that's if your m2 processor can cope with it uh, you've got your living room where you hook into your kind of multimedia type stuff i guess and then there's something that i think is supposed to be like the family library so i guess in here you would access your and Carter and your Microsoft bookshelf type stuff, thesauruses and dictionaries and all those learned things. Then there's a study where the serious business takes place and you can do your household accounts on your on your uh, Microsoft money and then mess about with your spreadsheets and all that kind of tedious stuff. And then finally there's the garage where real men go to get greasy and dirty with tools like control panel and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a nice idea. It's cute, but uh, clunky uh, I do like stuff like this I miss stuff like this but 
yeah, it's hard to use, so it was all a bit of a gimmick, but I'm glad I've got it, and I'm glad I've got it on a nice Packard Bell machine. Well, this video is now 20 minutes long, and I haven't even gotten onto the CPU testing yet, so I don't really like doing this, but I'm going to split this video into two parts, because I don't really want to end up with a 40-minute video. That's it. That's the hardware I looked at, and the desktop and all the Packard Bell side of stuff. We've got our graphics cards in there, so I can go on and make another video that documents the CPU testing. It'll probably only be about a 10 or 15 minute one, but really I don't want to go too much longer on this one and kind of people get bored and not see the CPU side of things. That's what they're interested in. So I'm going to call it a day for this one. I hope you enjoyed it if you've made it this far and I hope you watch part two, which will be coming up shortly after this one goes up. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.